It's time for Yin's Guys RC. Yin's Guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Yin's Guys RC. I'm Paul, and we're going to be talking about some foam building again today. You know, the last time we were here, we looked at the uh, flight test quick build kit of the Saab Viggen Jet and after talking to Charles Johnson and Omar El Reyes these guys got me completely hooked on foam building so yesterday I built a bat wing it's built out of plain old foam board. It's got a 480 Park Zone motor. It's got this flip up hatch for the electronics and battery with a cooling entrance here and an exit back here. The servos protrude through the wing and they're hidden by these little nacelles on the bottom. So what we're going to do is take a look at how I put this Batwing together. Because if you guys know me, you know I love Batman. Batman says that with enough money and enough time to train, anybody can be a hero. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy this episode. All right, what we got going on here is we're going to build a uh, scratch foam build bat wing. This uh, past weekend, I was in Akron at the uh, Northeast Ohio Electric Fest, and I saw one flying in combat there, and I found it to be just amazing. So you guys know how much I love Batman. So we got some foam board. I did some calculations on how the size I want it to be is. So to begin marking it out, what we're going to do is use a basic compass with a magic marker with a string tied to a piece of a barbecue skewer. I mark the center point where I want it. Once I get the string right, what we're going to do is poke the barbecue skewer into the center point. And then keeping the string tight, we will draw our arc. Then I'll take it out and reposition it on the other side. So that the, since the, the strings are glued to the peg, I want to make sure it's the same length on either side. And we'll draw our arc here. And there. And now the outline of our wing is complete. As I sped this part up for you, basically all I'm doing is cutting out the shape of the bat wing. It took me about four minutes to do it, but I didn't figure you'd want to watch four minutes of me dragging a knife through a foam board. So we just sped it up a little bit. I'm just using one of those break-off razor knives. I like to use them because you get a chance to break off each piece when it gets a little bit dull and you've always got a nice sharp blade to cut with. Don't try to make your cuts all at the same time. Drag it through slowly, cut through the paper and a little bit of foam, then a little bit more foam, and then finally through the bottom of the paper and everything will come out just great. Now you'll notice this is black uh, paper on the foam board and the foam is white. We'll take care of that when we paint it and we'll make sure all the edges and everything is black and it all looks really, really good. All right, you can see I've clearly cut out the shape of the bat wing, including a slot for the prop and the elevons. So what we're going to look at now is mounting the motor. It is a 2200 uh, kilovolt motor with a six inch prop. I've mounted it to a little wooden firewall that I've constructed. 
want to make sure you get your prop clearance correct. You know, you have to have a wider slot than the actual width of the prop for a couple of reasons. Number one, you know, the prop, it will be in different positions throughout the rotation. And number two, you want to make sure that you have room for any sort of vibration that may happen. I need more glue. I keep running out of glue sticks. So I had to go over here and get some more. Now we got some more glue sticks. Now we'll finish gluing in the firewall. Now for strength with hot glue, once you glue everything up, squish it around a little bit and then hold it in place and you'll be good to go. You see here we've got the sides of the pod built. We've got the propeller and its cavity spinning. And what we're going to do is add some uh, servos here in a second and a top to the pod. Now I already have the top cut out, which I will show you here. And it glues on the top, it's hinged on the front, and will be attached with a little bit of Velcro. Now we'll look to see where we need to put the servos and make the nacelles on the bottom. What we got going on here is I'm cutting out the material for the uh, nacelles on the bottom. I'm cutting it wide enough so that I can cut out two slits, one on either side of center, the, the width of the foam, so that the paper is still attached and I'll be able to do what uh, the flight test guys called a B-fold and fold the sides up and over the bottom piece. That makes everything look nice with no exposed edges. And again, you just fold the foam and peel off the inside piece that you don't want. It'll just come right off. And that leaves you with a really nice area where you can fold everything in. Then you just have to glue it on and your pods are ready to go. I just wanted to make these wide enough to fit the servo bodies in and they'll act as a nice sort of a landing platform. I'm also cutting like a little um, uh, angle on the front so that when I put these in they'll, they'll look kind of like air scoops I guess but you get the idea you put a little glue on the paper you fold the sides up you hold everything in place and you're good to go All right, in this part, we're going to mount our servos and servo horns. So first, we're marking out a position for the horns. Make sure that the horn extends far enough so that it is directly over the hinge line, but not protruding in front of the hinge line. Now I'm using the, these control horns that glue in. They have a, um, like a, a keel on a boat on the bottom, so they go good in the foam. Then we're going to fit our servos with the arms already on them, in the proper position, cut the holes, run the wires down through, and then we will cut, uh, mark our servo positions and glue them in. Next we're going to start with the uh, nacelles. We're going to put them where we want them, trim them up so that they fit exactly how we want them to cut a hole in them for the servo to protrude through now this is all TLR you know this, that looks about right so there's a lot of uh, playing around and adjustment till you get everything just where you want it once you do a little bit of hot glue and you're good to go All right, what we're doing here is we've got our nacelles glued on and we're going to make some covers for them. We're going to cut the nacelles to the width of the covers. We're going to cut the covers to the width of the nacelles and then cut off the width of the foam on the outside so that we have extra paper we can fold over the top and hide all the white foam. There's a little bit of fitting, a little bit of trial and error, and I also make one of my hinge cuts so that we can cover the angled portion. To make the hinge cut, you just cut it across and take out enough foam that you can fold it down. And you'll get a nice looking hinge cover. 
and there won't be any white showing. and check all of our throws. We're using the AR6110E so we'll put our bind plug in Plug in some batteriness. Ready to bind. Binding. And we are transmitted. So we need some reversal there. Okay, those still aren't right, so in that case what you want to do is swap them. Nothing to it. Alright, so if I reverse those now, Up is up, right is right. Yes, yeah, so I can see that needs trimmed a little bit. Check our. That's got some power. All right, all we're doing here is buttoning up the top hatch. The uh, foam has extra paper on the sides. We apply some hot glue, burn the crap out of our fingers and make sure it's all smoothed down. Now we're just going to cut out a cooling hole in the front shape of a little triangle. That way we can get some airflow through the electronics compartment. There is a hole in the back where the air can exit your ratio should be one to three your exit should be three times the length of your entrance mine is not but gotta make do with what we got now what I'm trying to do here is just cut the velcro to hold the front hatch down but the thing just doesn't want to cut so I eventually go get a pair of scissors and do it that way We got our final checks on everything, making sure it all looks good. And we are going to glue on our fins. Now I'm sanding an angle into each of the fins so th they look cool. I mean, that is the only reason. They would function the same if they were straight up or if they're at about a 45 degree angle. It really doesn't matter. A little hot glue. 
try and get your angles to match. And Bob's your uncle. Well, there she is. The completed bat wing. You see we have the cooling hole here. All of our nice electronics go in there. There is our motor and prop. And if we flip it over, you can see the little things I made to hide the uh, the rudder. It weighs in at exactly one pound. At 38 amps, it's putting out 492 watts. So that's uh, 492 watts per pound. Um, yeah, that's impressive. Hopefully we'll have a maiden tomorrow or the next day. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, it looks like Sunday is going to be the day for our maiden flight. Now, if you saw in the beginning, the thing looked a little bit warped. Some of the paper looked like it was uh, bubbling after being clear coated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big brass tube and shove it through the foam and take it out and glue in a carbon fiber spar to straighten everything out and keep it nice and stiff. Thanks for watching. And until I see you again, keep them flying. Thanks for watching and get out of here.